<sighs> I'm in my car. My mom's house faces me. There's lights on. There are my people in there waiting on me. They want, no, no. They demand an explanation. And there's gonna be hate coming my way. I know it. And just so we clear, I'm not gonna defend myself. I'm not gonna talk back or respond negatively. <laughs> Look, I'm back. It's been three months since I left and now I'm here, home, where I'm not even sure I belong anymore. Why? Well, I'm not the same guy who left here. The people in my mom's house might not even recognize me. This scar across my head tells me they definitely won't. I mean, yeah, I could say I've got the same shape, eyes, face, but my charisma, personality, soul, well, those aren't entirely present. Not this minute, anyway. Too much has happened. When I left, it was to find myself again. It was try to rediscover my love for Karen again. It was to find my purpose, and then, well, BAM! Something hits you like a freight train, and you're broken like a TV thrown out of a third floor window. You're lost like a child in a maze. You might as well be dead like a stormtrooper that's crossed Yoda or some shit like that. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, uh, I haven't done that in ages. Um, but look, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not dead. I'm, I'm alive, and I'm healthy again. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Ryan 2.2. To be more precise, I'm the new Eddie Murphy or the more advanced Wesley Snipes. This dude has got his shit together now. He's wiser, more purpose-minded, more grown. He's a fucking man. Have you figured it out yet? That's your hint that something hasn't quite been right with me? Nah, there's more on that later. I have people I haven't seen in months who I need to apologize to. They need me to be there for them again and I need to see my son. I've missed him. I need to see Karen again. I've even missed her despite all the stuff I've been hearing about her and her new man. Look, I might seem crazy, foolish, or like some dumb blonde chick who lets her rich husband do anything he likes as long as he doesn't leave her. Where am I going with this? I don't even know. I'm, I'm just spitballing here. Um, oh, oh yeah. Okay, I'm back on track again. My point is, I still love and adore Karen with all my heart. Yeah, you go away for a few weeks, you face Leatherface chasing you with a chainsaw, and suddenly you get a new perspective in life. <laughs> Strange, right? <laughs> Seriously, I haven't laughed in ages. <laughs> right now, I feel blessed to even have energy to do that. As I'm in my thoughts, there's a knock on my car window. It's my mom. She's in her nurse's uniform. She's about to go to her night shift open the car door for her and she enters and sits down. I give her a quick hug. How's my baby doing today? I shrug, not giving away my nervousness at being home. Well, I hope you're keeping your head elevated. You have nothing to be ashamed of. I hope you know that. I thought I did, but then I got here and doubt started creeping up on me like a crocodile on a gazelle near a water hole. <laughs> That's some David Attenborough shit for you, huh? Look, I know my mom's been worried about this day for a long time. She's warned me about it and she told me it was gonna be bad. But the fool that I am, I still came here wanting to face my green goblins. My mom takes my hand. She holds it tightly like this moment is more precious to her than anything on the planet. You owe them nothing. Do you hear me? Mom, <laughs> come on, I I've been gone for three months. I've had no contact with any of them, so I think they at least deserve like an explanation, right? Look, we talked about it, baby. You wanted to protect them. I, I was against it, but you decided that this was the road you wanted. So don't start regretting your decision now. It's too late for that. Yeah, I know, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just nervous to see them again. Look, when you're ready, you tell them. But you aren't right now, so. Look, remember, you're still recovering. So don't go in there thinking you have to stress yourself out because, look, you don't. You don't. Do you hear me? 
Look, you, you don't need to worry about me. Hey, you've just had life-saving surgery. You could have died. I have every right to worry about you, and I do. So what's the plan? Um, I go in there, I take everyone's anger on the chin, and then when the right opportunity comes, I tell them the truth. Okay. Well, I think it's stupid you're looking to tell them now, but I'll allow it. Just don't feel like you owe those people in there anything because you don't. Have you got that? I nod my head. Great. Now listen, Mama has to go to work. You get in any trouble there and you call me. And, and don't mention that whole adoption thing to Santos and Chanel. Why? They made the adoption list, didn't they? Yeah, but they might be peeved at you about something. Look, don't take it to heart. They're, they're dicks. And I for sure fantasize about slapping that tramp Chanel. Thank you for rejecting her, by the way. <laughs> okay, uh, anything else? If they say something terrible... <laughs> what, what, what will you do? I'll race back here and go all Jackie Chan on her ass. Ain't nobody messing with my baby today. <laughs> That's a classic Grace move there. <laughs> I love this warrior. She's always been there for her children, no matter what. She's out there fighting in our corner, and that's what makes her a real mom. The greatest in history. My hero. My mom kisses me on the cheek, and she exits. A minute later, I knock on my mom's front door. Ten seconds pass. It's probably the ten longest seconds of my life. Joey answers the door. Hey. There's a five-second silence. Dad? You're back? Where have you been? I hug my son. It's a long hug. And <laughs> I can tell Joey hates this whole ordeal, but guess what? This nigga's not letting go of his son. Love the son more than the air in his lungs. Why? Well, while in that hospital bed, there were times where I thought I'd never see him again. Let alone hug him again. <laughs> not that he's ever willingly allowed me to do that. I let go of him. There are tears on my face. You needed that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. I pulled Joey out of the house for a second to have my moment with him. I closed the front door. We sit on the steps leading to the house. Joey looks immediately uncomfortable. I don't blame him. I probably have him scared to death. But look, honestly, I, I don't want to do this, but I must move to fix what I did. So... What is it, Dad? Santos is grilling chicken, and I'm hungry. It won't take long. I just wanted to say how much I missed you. And you say that like you really mean it. I have a serious look on my face. Joy knows that. He rolls his eyes. <laughs> Man, I love this kid. Okay, then, you do. Do you have anything else you'd like to add to that? Yeah, I, um, I need you to know how much I regret it going away without saying goodbye to you. And I also need you to know that I will never in my life disown you as I did. You didn't exactly disown us. Grandma kept us in the loop. You were finding yourself. That should be a good thing. I'm smart enough to know that's a good thing, Dad. I mean, it should be a good thing, but it was a silly decision to make. Look, look, son, I, I realize my mistakes, but I also realize that you're a massive part of my life, and I never want to do anything to damage that strong bond we have. <laughs> we have that? <laughs> Did you lose your mind? S strong bond? <laughs> Get out of here. You're crazy. I never admit I'd have a bond with you. I ignore that and keep my serious face on. Look, I never want to hurt you again. Joey eyes me carefully for a second. Okay, the guy thinks I've lost my head. And look, I, I probably have, but I'm not ruining this moment. I've wished for it for too long, and now it's here. I'm not letting go of it. Not for anything. I shamefully love my son, and he can hate me as hard as he wants, but it's not gonna change the fact. I'm sticking to my guns like Trump supporters. Okay, that was a lousy statement, but look, y'all know what I mean. Dad, look, <laughs> truth be told, I didn't exactly miss you at all. I have a girlfriend, Elizabeth, you know, the one in my class. 
oh yeah <laughs> cool i've seen pictures of her and look you two make a cute couple good work uh yeah whatever um anyway i had a life so there weren't any chances for me to miss you so you need to know we're cool i'm i'm okay i smile i go to hug joey again but joey stands up to make his quick escape he opens the door and runs off yep good to see you but i'm out of here he runs off mom dad's back and he's offering us hugs a way of apologizing for leaving us he's even lamer now than he's ever been i take a deep breath and enter the house chanel appears she looks about four months pregnant she eyes me up and down <laughs> boy if looks could kill i'd be eaten by a lion right now boy i know you didn't get your mom to invite us to this barbecue so we see your lame ass again tell me i <laughs> i've really missed you more than you'll ever know chanel's taken aback for a second and then shakes out of it right cars on the table none of us want you near us i'm just saying and I hope it hurts a little bit because that's my intention. I smile. There's always so much fire in her. I feel sorry for that poor girl or boy who gets to be her son or daughter-in-law. They'll be in a world of pain that's guaranteed. You're adopting, you're pregnant, and there's a wedding on the horizon. You really do have it all, don't you? Yeah, well, two of the things you meant were already spinning, but you nearly ruined one of them. I beg your pardon? I see your brain still doesn't work. Just get yourself the fuck out of my face. Look, I know you wouldn't like seeing me again, but if you could just take a second to let me give you a chance to lie to me about your whereabouts, it's too fucking late for that. Too motherfucking late. Now get your lame ass out of this house before I snap you in two. I send her a warm smile as I look at her belly. Congrats on the baby. My mom told me you were having a girl. As I say that, Santos enters. He has a look of shock on his face. He quickly hugs Chanel and spins her around. <laughs> They're so in love with each other. This is that if Bell Street could talk kind of love, folks. It's unstoppable. We are? We're having a girl? Chanel glares at me. Yeah, I was planning on telling you that in private tonight, but guess which dick ruined my plan like a tornado ruining a picnic? Chanel stamps on my foot as she exits. I'll be there in a second, babe. I face Santos. I send him a nervous smile and... Well, Santos shows me the same anger that Chanel showed me. Bro, look, I mean this with respect, but nobody wants you here. This is a private event for family and friends. And since you haven't been part of us for a while, I don't think you belong here. So, the door's behind you. Vamos! Santos grabs me by the collar and looks to lead me out. I'm not gonna fight him. Uh, look, I, I probably deserve this. As I'm guided to the door, there are screams. It's Karen's two girls. They've seen me. They race over to me to hug me. I know to embrace them. As we hug, Joey approaches. But he sees something on my head. It's my scar from my surgery. My doctor took the stitches out this morning. Dad, why do you have that disgusting scar across your head? No one cares, Joey. Your dad was just leaving. It's his house. Answer the question, Dad. I let go of Karen's two girls. They race off. Well, I'm waiting. Don't make me call Grandma to ask her. <laughs> How about I tell you after speaking to your mom? How about I do a fill up banks and toss you out of here? <laughs> Bro, look, I, I came here in peace. I I'm not here to be hostile. I, I just want to give you all the answers you've been hoping to get. Hoping is a stretch. It all alludes to us caring about you, which we don't. None of us do. You're a fucking disease to us. Okay, but if I leave, you won't get the answers you want, and then you'll keep wondering. So, please, just allow me to be in your space for a second longer until I speak my truth. And then you fuck off. Is that the deal? I nod my head. Santos deliberates. For a moment, I think he's going to grab me and throw me out of there, but he doesn't. Instead, he steps aside and allows me to walk on through. I see Karen in the distance with... Oh, shit. Curtis? Curtis kisses Karen. Okay, so they're back together. Well, that's a gut punch. A few seconds later, 
I walk over to Karen as she's just about to receive a kiss from Curtis. They kiss and I wait. Karen sees me. Ryan, it's um good to see you. Curtis steps in front of Karen expecting a fight or something. Yo, look, I'm calm, I told you. I'm I'm at peace. Curtis is a tall, athletic, mixed race tech millionaire who looks like he's ready to battle me. I'm not fighting anybody today. Off from a handshake. Curtis and Karen stare at each other confused. <laughs> what? I, I, I want to offer you my sincerest congrats. You two make way more sense than Karen and I ever did. Congratulations. Curtis smiles and shakes my hand. Thanks, bud. Hey, look, I meant that from the bottom of my heart. Karen has a confused look on her face. Are you going to tell us where the hell you've been for the last three months? Chanel and Santos joins us. Santos takes a beer out of the fridge and offers it to me. I reject it with my hand. No, thank you. I, I don't drink anymore. We're waiting, Ryan, Karen says. Joey joins us at that kitchen island. So, uh, I've been sick, guys. Sick as in mentally ill, because when you left, it came across like that, Chanel says. No, I, um, I had a brain tumor. Shock reverberates across the room. Joy comes closer to hug me. Curtis tries to hug Karen, but she pulls away from him. She wants to touch me. I keep my distance. Tell us what happened. Um, on the Sunday I left, I told you I was gonna go away for about a week. The plan was to go to New York and see some shows. But you never got that far? Karen asks. No, what happened was <laughs> different to that fairy tale I was hoping of. What happened instead? So I got a call from the doctor. The previous day at work, I had fainted and I got checked out at the hospital, but the doctors thought it was nothing and they were wrong. Yep, they did a blood check and then a day later they found out I had a tumor and the tumor was able to be removed. The tumor as in cancer? You had cancer, Dad? I nod my head. Joy looks close to tears. Karen holds him. I ruffle his head a bit to reassure him I'm okay. The plan was to have the surgery straight away, but there's a risk that the tumor could return in the future. So what were your options? Karen asked. I had two options in front of me. I could remove it then and there and then come back home straight away, but the risk was the cancer coming back to kill me. Or going through chemo to remove it once and for all? Chanel asked. Yep. So after talking to my mom and the doctors, we decided that we'd have chemo first to get it as small as possible so they could remove it with the surgery. And you went through that all by yourself without talking to the most important people in your life? My mom was beside me through the ordeal. She never left my side. And to be honest, there's not a single soul on this planet that I would have chosen to be beside me than her. Yeah, but she should have told us. We cared about you just as much as she did. We have the right to know. Joey, I asked her not to tell you. I needed to go through this by myself. I couldn't risk letting you guys think that there was a chance of losing me. That's wrong thinking, Dad. True, but I just felt it was better to deal with it then and explain it later. So what if we lost you during the surgery and didn't get a chance to say goodbye? That could have fucked us up, Ryan. Look, that, that wouldn't happen. I had a great doctor. He performed the same surgery countless times. I was in the safest hands possible. Believe that. We still feel like you should have told us all of this. We, we had the right to know what was happening, Chanel says. I mean, look, y'all had y'all's issues going on, and to be honest, you two weren't feeling me at the time, so I had my reason not to tell you. I don't regret my decisions. Santos comforts Chanel. They share a look. I see it. What? Um, it, it, it doesn't matter now. Well, I think it's still vital, Chanel says. Babe. What, Santos? He nearly cost us a chance to... A, a chance to what? Ac actually, Santos is right. It, it, it doesn't matter. 
Karen looked like she's about to burst out crying. Um, Curtis, can we talk for a second? Yeah, n- no, I-, I know what you're about to say. <laughs> Look, don't bother. Girls, uh, Dad's leaving, so let's go say goodbye at the door. Curtis takes a beer from the table and walks towards the front door. Karen's girls follow him to say their goodbyes. Karen follows them to the door. Joey, can we talk in the den? I have something I want to show you. I don't want it. Please, you'll like it. No! Honey, hear him out. He's trying, Chanel says. I don't want to be near him! Okay, cool. That's that's okay. There's, there's no pressure for me, but um, I should head off. I start walking towards the door. Joey's left alone for a second and then decides to run after me. Dad, wait! I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean what I said. Um, c- can you sleep here tonight? I, I could use your brain. <laughs> For what? Your love life? Um, kinda. Um, Elizabeth hasn't replied to my text in three hours, and I'm worried she's trying to, like, leave me. Um, could you help me? Sure. If you allow me to give you my present first. Okay. That's, that's cool. You always have to force me to do what I don't want to do. You're such a tyrant. (laughs) I pull out a sheet of paper from my pocket. I hand it to Joey. He looks at it confused. What is this? Well, the words DNA results should clue you in. You got my sample and did a DNA test? A DNA test that shows me to be 99.9% your son. So you're you're my dad? That I am. Joey jumps up at me to hug me. We hug for a beat. This is the closest we've ever bonded. I love my son. Joey straightens himself out and looks serious again. Hey, Dad, I, I know I have no reason to hate you now, but I think I can still ignore you like I usually do. You know, I, I don't think I'm capable of getting that out of my system. You're just, you're just too much of a bastard. Like, you really are. You can hate me your whole life as long as you allow me to hate you back. Deal? Shake on it. Do it. Do it now. Ugh, okay, that's pointless, but um I, I, I don't hate you. I just I just dislike you. You've had a downgrade. So be thankful. I laugh and then I ruffle his hair. Yeah, he needs a trim. I'll take him to the barbers tomorrow. Thanks, son. Oh, and I was bullshitting you about Elizabeth. I've got the most excellent game in history. Too much of a pro to lose a girl like that. (laughs) Please, Dad. Joey walks off laughing. I laugh too. My heart's complete. Santos and Chanel walk over. Hey, uh, we wanted to be real with you about, uh, about something really quick. It's about what was happening the week you left. Look, guys, you don't have to... I know I, I probably fucked up somewhere. Um, yeah, you really did. We were doing the paperwork to adopt, and you had promised to give us a reference, but you had your head so out of the loop with the whole Karen thing that... Oh, shit, I, I forgot to write you the reference. Damn, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. There's no excuse for that. I'm, I'm so sorry. Look, 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 you're, you're forgiven. It, it, it all worked out in the end. Plus, Kay gave us a way better reference for this than <laughs> you would have given us, so thank the Lord you didn't give us any. We're, we're, we're really lucky. <laughs> yeah, that you are. Um, are we cool? Santos grabs me into a hug. Guys, I want a hug too. We both open our arms to hug Chanel. It's a group hug. <laughs> we're good again. Like, my, my fam is back to me. My, my heart is full. Karen walks over. Actually, it's almost full. I release Chanel and Santos. Santos mouths to talk to her. I nod my head. Chanel and Santos head off. Karen pulls me aside to talk. We stare off for a second and just without a word, she puts her head on my head. We just feel the vibe for a moment. Then Karen pulls me into a long hug. We say nothing. We just hug it out. And after a second, I notice that Karen's crying. I wipe away her tears and then kiss her on the cheek. We hold each other without saying a word. 
there's no need for words here. Yo, like, I, I, I feel the energy. I, I feel her unspoken love for me. After about 30 seconds of holding on to each other, I release her. We say nothing about our love. As I said, we know it's there. We both feel it. There's nothing more natural than realizing you have love in your heart. And I have that. Santos, Joey, and Chanel wave over to us. We walk over and sit on the couch. Santos brings me a cup of water. He has a beer. We clink glasses and I raise a glass to my fam. The fam will always have my back. The fam that will always be in my heart. Today, folks, is a damn good day. Before I sign off, I want to say something. I, Ryan of the Stupid Clan, am the most grateful son of a bitch on this planet. Why? Well, because my stars are right now aligned. There's only peace in this valley. Only wind on this cloudless day. Only joy in this heart of mine. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to straight out let it shine. I'm going to let it shine so everyone in my space knows it's there. And I'll keep fucking doing it until they know I mean that shit. And even when they realize it, I'll keep making sure they're aware of my joy for them being in my presence. I'm going to need to throw some Dennis Waitley in your face for a second. I, look, I know y'all are sick of me, but just look, hang in there for a second. I need you to realize how fucking lucky you have it. Now, I heard this quote three minutes after I got my all clear from my doctor. He told me that the cancer was gone and was unlikely to return. Thank God. Um, so this quote was given to me on a card and signed by my attending doctor. All my doctors and nurses signed it. This, folks, is where the shit gets real. Here's a quote. I need y'all to focus. <sighs> Happiness cannot be traveled to, owned, earned, worn, or consumed. Happiness is the spiritual experience of living every minute with love, grace, and gratitude. Dennis Waitley. I'd like to dedicate that quote to the most amazing, supportive people in my life. That's you, Santos. That's for sure you, Chanel, Mom, and definitely Karen's two little girls. And indeed you, <laughs> my little cherub, Joey. But mainly, that quote is dedicated to the love of my life. You, Karen. <laughs> I love you, babe. I fucking love you, Karen! Your love always and forever surrounds me. Know for sure that I'll never take that for granted. Again. Ever. <laughs> Alright, I'm done. Thank you for hearing me out. I'm out of here. This Shit Is Real was read by me, Smurf Brown, and written by Joao Nasita.